Hello, everybody. This is Elijah Ignatiu from The Very Secret Plan, and I have a very special guest, Carl Kalaman, doing our second interview. And Carl is has a, his latest book is The Quantum Science of Psychedelics, and he has a paper that is uh, connecting the coronavirus virus with the My, Mayan calendar that will be in the, uh, the YouTube description. And on June 6, he has an event coming up called Accessing the Ninth Wave. And if I give a little uh, intro to, to give the significance of, of Carl's work, this map behind me is part of what he has decoded within the Mayan calendar. And if you see these nine different levels, each, each of these levels is pointing to 2012 at the top, and it's an evolution of consciousness. And the top three levels are very significant right now in that we're going from power to ethics to unity consciousness. And the Mayans had it all mapped out, pointing to right now. And so this is a very unique perspective in terms of understanding what we are all going through on the planet right now. And it is probably going to be extremely different from the government narrative and the normal stories that we have to explain the larger context. And given that, I will go over to Carl and, and sort of start with the, the first question of how does the Mayan calendar right now explain what is going on? Okay. Uh, and when you say what is going on, I, res I assume you are referring to the uh, so-called pandemic and or also the, more importantly, maybe the reactions that are happening in the world to this particular virus. I, I suppose that's what you... Yes. Um, well, there are certain aspects of it. Um, you know, I, I, I should uh, um, add a little bit to your initial uh, description uh, um, of, of the Mayan pyramid, the nine-storied pyramid, before we go into uh, what may uh, clar be clarified based on that. So um, this, this pyramid that you have behind yourself is really then uh, modeled upon the, uh, the pyramid of Kukulkan, the pyramid of the plumed serpent in Chichen Itza in Yucatan in, in Mexico. And one of the things that is so striking or should be striking about this pyramid is that it's built in terraces. And that's true for, for almost all Mayan uh, pyramids. And that includes uh, other pyramids that are built in nine levels in this way. So that's a little bit different from several other pyramids in other parts of the world. Notably, it's different from, from the major pyramids in, in Egypt. But there is a very significant message in that uh, building a pyramid in, in terraces like this. And this is that uh, it's a reflection of the quantized uh, evolution of the universe. In other words, that uh, the evolution of the universe takes place in quantum steps. And what a quantum step means is that you, when you go from one quantum level to another quantum level, uh, then it's not just about doing more of the same. Uh, it's not something you just automatically slide over into to the other uh, state. It, it is a, each of these levels are separated from each other with a quantum leap. And um, that's very important because uh, what you have here is, is, a, is a staircase, you might say, uh, or you can even look upon it as a climb going up to the top level as, as in one day the, the Mayan kings would do. To, to enact the evolution of the, uh, of, of the universe, really. And, and what they did, then did was that they, through this climb, through nine levels, they passed through nine different quantum states, each of which was developed or, or communicated to the human beings through a serpent. 
or we would, in modern quantum language, we would say that it was communicated through a wave. And uh, these waves uh, uh, is th then what they would use the plumed serpent as a symbol for. So uh, the, what it all amounts to is that mm, a worldview where our own minds are reflections of cosmic quantum states which are communicated to us or, or downloaded by us through these waves that the ancients would refer to as, as serpents. And in particular, the Maya and the ancient Mexicans, they would refer to it as the plumed serpent. And the reason they talked about the plumed or the feathered serpent was really, I think, that they saw these waves as sort of flying through the cosmos, flying through the air. They're not ground-based serpents as we usually think of them, uh, biologically speaking. So here we have a, a model of the entire uh, evolution of the universe, uh, where each of the different waves uh, is, is developing certain aspects of the life in the universe. And uh, 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 what was significant uh, fairly recently in the year 2011 was that uh, humanity had then uh, attained the highest level of the, uh, the highest quantum state, you might say. I, Sorry, I was just pointing to that level on the... Oh, I see. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's good. Exactly. So that, that means, it, it doesn't mean that humanity actually absorbed or, 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 uh, or established a communication with that particular wave. But it did mean that this particular wave, for the first time in the evolution of, of the universe, uh, that this wave became accessible to human beings. We got the potential of accessing it. And each of these levels then, the, the quantum states that they carry um, brings a, a different kind of perception uh, to the human mind. Uh, it, it brings a certain way of organizing reality that comes out of downloading a particular uh, quantum state. So uh, this I'd like to present then as, as a more detailed background to the nine story pyramid that you have behind yourself. And uh, there are several of these nine story pyramids among the Maya. And of course, we, we know of the sacredness of the number nine from many different traditions, because it is really a number that is fundamental in most ancient uh, creation uh, narratives and, and, and so forth. So now today, the situation in interpreting these different uh, uh, waves, uh, these plumed serpents, these quantum states is more complicated than it was before 2011. Because what, what happened in 2011 was that all the nine waves became accessible, in principle inaccessible. But, but then they continue and they create kind of a, 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 a uh, interference pattern. Each wave uh, interferes with the other waves. And uh, uh, while it, I, I found it possible in some instances to make very in, uh, exact predictions before the year 2011, that becomes much more difficult after that particular year. Um, but um, anyway, for the first time in history, all of these waves are running and they're running in parallel and continue to run. And um, they uh, bring, uh, each wave, you might say, brings a sp specific uh, perspective to our understanding of reality. And uh, uh, the, in the current complex situation, uh, you might say that 
uh, we have to consider the, the effects of several of these different waves uh, and the influence that they have on the human mind. And then in turn, then what are the effects of the, the, the changes on, on the more physical level that is, the, that is happening? These waves really then are, are really like underlying waves. They are uh, the quantum field that lies under reality. And then uh, the, the physical manifest reality, they, it's sort of a manifestation of, of these different um, uh, interference patterns that all these nine waves are creating. So that was a fairly long, um, uh, uh, background, you might say, and uh, uh, it, it, it's it's developed in in for those that want to read it. And I think you know to to really absorb this, it really requires that you study it, read it, and uh, especially my two most recent books, I think, are useful for that. The Nine Waves of Creation that came in 2016, and then. Uh, the Quantum Science of Psychedelics that came in uh, 2020. Um, but, so coming back to your question, um, we are, uh, in, in these different waves then, uh, have different frequencies and they, uh, some of them are in their upturns, so to speak, like any wave would go, go into a peak others are into downturns. And uh, uh, one of the things I had developed in this uh, article that I recently wrote about uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the coronavirus and the Mayan calendar is uh, this basic uh, wave movement of civilizations. How uh, civilizations then are a product of the sixth wave, the national cycle, as it's called on that pyramid. And it's a, so it's a sixth level. And, uh, and that was activated in 3115 BC. And when that happened, the first civilizations emerged on our planet in Sumeria or, or Mesopotamia and uh, uh, in uh, um, Egypt and in the Indus Valley and the, what, what happened when, when that uh, wave became accessible to humans was that their minds were changed, it became much more structured, it got an organization and, and with that structure of the mind people started to build cities and pyramids and all, all the other things that, that are uh, um, uh, part of what we call civilization. And uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, then there's been a number of different peaks in that particular um, uh, wave. And uh, uh, there are seven of them. And you might say that it started then with the first civilizations in Egypt and, and Mesopotamia. And the seventh one, though, basically became a uh, a way, a civilization of Western dominance in the world. Um, most, you know, several West European countries initially were part of it, like uh, Spain, France, uh, Netherlands, and Belgium. But the 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 most important powers that have benefited from this particular uh, wave peak is, is the, the, the UK and the US. And what happened with this wave in the year 2011 is that it turned down into a valley. So what we should expect now is a, some kind of a downturn of what we might call Western civilization, Western global civilization. And uh, that will take different forms. But one of the things that I develop in that particular article is, is that there is a new quantum state uh, determining uh, the human mind compared to, uh, to in 2011. Um, it's, uh, um, and, and of course, it's an important aspect that people are unaware of these changes. The, this whole 
worldview, you might say, where there are serpents and wave movements, ups and downs of, of civilizations, of all kinds of technologies and so forth, is really not part of the modern worldview. In other words, the, the idea has been, um, you know, ever since the book of Genesis was written, the idea has been that the serpent is an evil species and it was cursed in, in the dominating uh, religion that came to shape the, the Western civilization. And for that reason, uh, I would say people are very unprepared for this kind of a downturn of, of, of that level of civilization that, that uh, this implies. Um, and uh, anyway, so uh, it, uh, it's a downturn of civilization is happening. It's not just a small little problem in a, in a virus or, a, a, you know, that you, we've seen over the couple of years the, the um, uh, various, um, uh, an intensification of uh, um, natural catastrophes and, and, and so forth, and then you might say that the, the, this virus is just another step on uh, this downturn. Um, so that's part of the picture, but it's not the full picture, but it's, it's, it's a very serious part of the uh, picture that uh, the, the Western civilization is now on its way down. And it's not, it is not like the Western civilization is, is on its way down because of the virus. It's the other way around. It's because the Western civilization is on its way down that things like this coronavirus appears and other things will continue to appear. And this is how it's always been in, this, in these wave movements. If you, you know, in, in my books, I, I track the various peaks and valleys of, of evolution and um, there's been several you know, dark ages in, in the history of, of humanity. Um, now, the dark ages have not led to the end of the world. That's a completely different story. But it is a downturn. It is some kind of a, uh, uh, the, what was created in the previous peak then gets to be, uh, go down to some extent, not completely, but the, 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 when, the, when the dark ages come, they will sort of take away some of what was created in the previous per, uh, period of, the, um, of a peak. Um, so this is one part of it. Then there, there are also other waves that are involved in our current situation, very much so. And there, there is the... Um, uh, the the seventh wave, the sixth wave, sorry, the, the eighth wave and the ninth wave, and, and they're all adding uh, influences on the human mind um, in, in, in terms of how we are, um, uh, uh, how we are uh, changing our, our, our thinking and so forth. And uh, uh, the uh, so one of the th important things though that have been added to the to this sixth wave the the big civilizational wave that i talked about that leads to the rise and fall of, of civilization uh, are the the higher waves and, and one of them is the, the seventh wave, which is really then the wave of industrialism that started in 1755. Then there is the eighth wave, which is partly the digital wave that started in 1999. And then finally, there is this uh, um, ninth wave, which is um, the, the, the highest wave, it doesn't bring any, any technology into existence. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a unifying wave. It's sort of a, a wave that uh, 
calls for a return to unity. Um, and uh, uh, that those waves were never in the past activated. And they really, you know, are the, the if you want to uh, chart a future of humanity in the, in the sense of in what direction humanity is meant to go, then that is about climbing to the top of the pyramid and going to those highest levels of consciousness that are brought by a resonance with these particular waves. And so what this means is that, you know, the, the, the picture as I'm describing here is probably quite complex or certainly for somebody who's never heard about it before, uh, it, it may seem quite uh, uh, complex, um, but they they are uh, um, they are interacting in a in a in a complex way, and uh, no, I'm I lost track here, or or I, I was. Uh, 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 if I can just come in a little bit with the eighth wave, because you said it was the okay. digital, but yeah. isn't it also based on ethics? Um, that's not something I have uh, taught really. I think my, you know, my colleague Ian Langold uh, would would teach that. Um, I, I I don't. It's not something I would go into myself. Actually, okay. uh, he he he. He made that twist on it. It may very well have some value, but it's not something I, I um, uh, integrity. He said, right? Or what? Ethics. Ethics. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't buy that actually, if I think about it, because you know, much of of what comes out of the eighth wave, there are several different things coming out of it. Uh, if what's coming out of it are things that are coming from the eight, uh, the right brain half, and uh, um, uh, including the the big uh, tech companies, uh, you know, the whole digital revolution comes out of the eighth wave, and I wouldn't call them ethical, um, oh. uh, and that's one of the most important things that come out of the eighth wave is are those. Uh, the, the whole tech uh, digital revolution with with all that is uh, uh, that that's carried so so anyway he might have said so i i don't think i said so and uh, um uh, i i and i'm not sure if it's true i I'm, i wouldn't call these uh, tech companies ethical or uh, like that okay I, I lost track there, uh, probably. Well, I uh, think you're, you're leading up to the ninth wave of unity uh, yeah. consciousness and the effect of the industrial and the digital waves uh, at seven and eight, and then coming into what's happening right now with the coronavirus and why civilization is falling. And that now there's these interference patterns from the ninth wave coming in, which are new. Mm -hmm which are setting the scene for what's happening right now with the relationship between the, uh, the seven, eight and ninth waves. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I hope you can edit this out or the, or. Well, this is, this is just, just a chat. Um, okay. It's, okay. It doesn't, okay. if anyone's uh, following the, you know, just keep going. Yeah. Um, Okay, so in the current situation since 2011, uh, all these different waves, all the nine waves, all the nine serpents, as the Maya would have said, are running in parallel. And uh, to some extent though, it, it really is up to us with which waves do we develop resonance. And uh, I, I think there is a, there's a lot of things to, that speaks uh, um, to the possibility that we can choose 
what kind of uh, mindsets that we want to develop resonance with. And uh, this uh, sixth wave that I'm saying that bringing, is now bringing down the, the Western civilization, um, that's a, a wave of duality. It's a wave of dominance. It's a wave of, uh, uh, historically speaking, uh, the, the, the civilizations that have come out of this have usually been based on inequality and duality and, uh, and so forth. Um, and th that's, you know, a, a part in humanity's path, you might say. The, uh, there are, you know, the, there are reasons that this kind of duality was uh, 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 transmitted to the humans. And that's mostly that it's necessary in order to create civilizations. Um, you, you won't have that without a, a mind which is very structured and dualistic and separates and discerns, etc., etc., etc. But that <clears throat> then uh, goes back to, or, or uh, if we want to go beyond that uh, duality, it, it calls upon us to. Uh, uh, develop resonance with the higher waves, um, meaning the, the, especially the ninth wave, but also to some extent the seventh and the eighth uh, waves. Um, and uh, the, the ninth wave, in contrast to the sixth wave, which developed the uh, civilizations of, of humanity, the ninth wave is one without duality. It's, it's a wave of, of consciousness, uh, unity consciousness. And uh, uh, that's a wave then that, that may change the consciousness of, of humanity uh, uh, to one of uh, seeing we rather than me, so to speak. I, I initially, when I laid out the principles underlying uh, the, this pyramidal structure, I emphasize that it is a, a quantum um, model. And uh, you, you, we, we don't get from one level to another just by doing more of the same. Mm. And uh, uh, what that means is that it will take uh, an intention to create a, a quantum leap in order to get to the ninth wave. And uh, uh, what that implies is that I, I think we will have to uh, move beyond uh, the simple me uh, focus that uh, life has had in, in, in these lower uh, waves and go over to a we, uh, um, space or, or a we consciousness, uh, which is not, we here is not one person plus, plus one person. No, it is to go to be guided by the, the unified path of, of several different uh, people. And I think that is really then the, the necessity when it comes to uh, saving the planet, uh, we will have to go to uh, that kind of a higher level of, of consciousness that, that this um, um, uh, ninth wave brings. Uh, uh, and uh, so that's the reason then, uh, you know, the, I, this, I, I sent you this um, uh, information about the uh, this event on June 6th um, that I'll be having with Patricia Albere, uh, which is, uh, you know, accessing the, the uh, um, ninth wave um, in, in order to uh, share unity. Um, and so that, that is not just uh, about uh, the, the theoretical background of, of how the universe evolves, which is what I'm talking about here, but it's also about uh, practical uh, um, uh, exercises and uh, 
experiences to, uh, that people may have that will f facilitate for other people to access this ninth wave of, of, of consciousness, to actually experience what that is, is like. Um, Yes. So are, are you saying, like, I, I use the term of old paradigm and new paradigm, and looking at the old paradigm is based upon fear, the new paradigm is based upon love. And so that sort of, I guess, dovetails into the ninth wave being the paradigm of unity consciousness or love. Yeah. The uh, sixth and seventh waves are based upon an old structured wave that exists, but now both exist and people have to make a choice between one or the other. And, and if there are children born after 2011, I would imagine their DNA is different because they're born within that wave. And so their thinking, their mentality, everything about them is gonna be very different. So they're gonna have a hard time dealing with these old paradigm structures. And yeah. as, this is like a scientific background. Like this is the way it is. It has been mapped out. It is formulated, it, it is occurring, it isn't sort of like a maybe. So it gives us hope for the future because the, 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 this wave exists. And so yeah. our, our, our species is, is going to be fundamentally transformed by the nature of these waves, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's also, the, 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 it has to, I think there has to be an intention to actually uh, take the make the quantum leap to another level uh, mm -hmm. without that intention uh, uh, you know it's, it's unclear where things will go but if such an intention exists and people ex understand what what these different levels what kind of phenomena that they bring and realize that the sixth wave that is now going down is a is a wave of duality and dominance and uh, and all the, the 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 brutality actually that went with those particular uh, waves uh, that that's uh, can be replaced or you can focus on developing resonance with the higher waves including then the 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 ninth wave which then, because it's a, not of duality, but one, a wave of, of unity, it, it then invites the experience of love and non-separation, and uh, which is really the same thing as love, I would say. And uh, um, uh, that uh, holds a, a potential for uh, the future. Um, and uh, in the sense that, you know, much of the difficulties, much of what, what the challenges that humanity are facing now comes out of that previous quantum state of duality, of dominance, so to speak, that, that uh, through 5,000 years, uh, uh, this, this civilizations that are come out of the sixth wave have, about being, have been about dominating other people, uh, or, or dominating nature, or, or uh, kings dominating slaves, and all, all those dualities has created a, 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 a social structure of, of uh, um, inequality, of dualism, uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, you, that, of course, uh, uh, that kind of duality that the mind was carrying under the influence of these waves was also uh, projected onto people themselves. So it really created a kind of a judgmental attitude towards the human beings themselves or any individual the, the, uh, the, the, themselves. So in that sense, you can also talk about that wave as a source of fear as you mentioned earlier. Whereas the, the ninth wave on the, on the top level is one that brings uh, uh, love and uh, non-separation, unity, and uh, going over to not at all uh, uh, dominating uh, or even coexisting, but more strongly than that, going to a uh, unified approach with many different people and a unified approach uh, to uh, all living species and to, to the planet uh, at large. And so th this, this um, you know, it, it sounds like people think that 
many people would think that um, the reason we've come in, into this place is that there are uh, certain aspects of human nature that are so negative that we have come into this kind of a difficult situation. But what it turns out is that it really isn't about that. It really is about the, the waves that we have developed resonance with and, and how we have understood evolution. Uh, I think it's really been the, the actual sources of evolution as emanating from a cosmic uh, um, center that sends out these waves that shift the, the, the way we look upon uh, reality. Th that worldview um, opens up, uh, you know, another, another uh, uh, more uh, positive way of, of uh, um, looking at reality and, uh, and who we are actually, who we are as a species. Do you find, let's say, there's more buy-in from scientists with your work, or like what what has happened since I last sp spoken to you? Are you, um, what kind of impact are you seeing in terms of of people seeing this as the major underlying foundation for everything we're experiencing? Well, I think at this point, you know, uh, uh, since. We spoke, what I think was in 2017. Um, uh, then I, I basically have been writing a, another book um, that I'm, I'm not touching upon right now here, uh, but the quantum science of psychedelics. So I really have, haven't been engaged very much in uh, uh, external uh, activities. And the, as it happened exactly on that day, on the release of my most recent book, um, then the WHO um, uh, declared the, the coronavirus a pandemic. And so everything shifted away from, from the focus on, on that particular book. What's happened more recently is, though, that there's, there's been a quite an interest in the previous work the you know the the earlier books about the 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 maya and, and the 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 quantum theory of of the maya and so at this point you might say by um therapists and healers and and that group of people i feel it may be making headways in into their worldview but in terms of the scientific community i you know i i have uh, uh, have had very little responses. Very few people would would even. Uh, this is like uh, totally questioning the the meaningfulness of of all of uh, science. Really presenting a, a, a coherent, unified uh, model that uh, that has so much uh, evidence underlying it that. Um, it's, for that reason, many scientists would not be interested because they can't really argue against it. They can only, if they don't want to have their own views threatened, the best thing they can do is to simply ignore it and pretend that it doesn't exist. So um, it really hasn't happened in, in that uh, domain uh, very much. And I, I imagine that the thinking of those people are caught in the sixth and seventh waves. Yeah. And anyone who's in that wave who hasn't made the quantum leap yeah. can't comprehend those pioneers or the people that have been, you know, accessing that wave. And I, I find, I guess, like with psychedelics, right, where, you know, you have a DMT experience or you, 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 you journey into another dimension because of a psychedelic, all of a sudden, you're questioning the very foundation of everything because you're getting information and experience, direct experience. It is so different from what the normal, uh, you know, um, interpretation of reality is. Yeah, yeah, that's very well said. I th I think, and and it's also what you said. Describe that. So you know, the typical scientist is really then. Uh, it's it's not just based on on sort of logic and, and evidence. It's it's more based on what is the framework of thinking 
which they actually download from these waves, unbeknownst to themselves. And uh, what, what thoughts that we produce, how, how we relate to reality, all of these things are actually then uh, functions of the, the quantum states that we download and, and through our resonance with these waves coming from the center of the universe. And as you're saying, you know, what, what happens with, um, with the, when, when you take a psychedelic is that you, uh, you, you change that whole resonance. Uh, you, you, your, 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 your brain becomes uh, receptive to the whole range of different waves and, and the kind of information that these different waves are, are carrying with them. So the normal structuring of the mind that usually comes from this sixth wave, which is then the, you know, structured civilizations, ordered uh, uh, dominance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That whole structure is, and I explain exactly how that happens in, in my book, that whole structure is then disengaged, and then people get actually a, a much more total and, and complete um, experience of, of uh, uh, the, the cosmic, uh, cosmic resonance and the cosmic information that you, that, that the, if, if you're just normally tuned into the sixth wave and the structure of the mind that that brings into, um, into you, uh, then, then you can't conceive of, of the, the wholeness of, of reality that may be opened up um, but by certain plant medicines and, and so forth. I mean, I, I, when I first came across your work and I got the significance of it, I mean, I, I, I play with a lot of maps and I'm playing with a lot of cognitive structures and, and looking to de design holistic yeah. systems. And the reason I wanted to get back in contact with you is because to me, what this knowledge truly better than anything else on the planet explains what is occurring and on each wave you're saying there's there's a down and there's an up and then there's another wave and there's a down and up and there's another wave that's quicker and then as you go through time and as you're saying in the sixth wave it's going down but these other waves may be going up and down so there's different yeah. time periods where there's a switch right where it goes yeah. from up to down and that's where you see these significant shifts in our society. Yeah. Where exactly. all of a sudden something was impossible and now, now it's possible because these larger waves are, are creating these phase interference or, or connection points that then change how we access consciousness, right? Yes. Yeah. So you probably mapped out in your books these specific you know, how these cycles interact and then the timing. And I'm just wondering about 2020 yeah. and this year and why it's so significant in terms of how these waves are interacting. Like, in, can you explain that? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, in I, what I did talk about in, um, in, my, in my book, Nine Ways of Creation from uh, 2016, one of the things that I clearly predicted was the downturn of the West. But he also talked about the, uh, that there is a wave, um, uh, in the seventh wave, we're also in, in a, a valley. And that makes it much more difficult. And the, the bottom level in that valley is actually September 2021. Oh. Uh, and so... Uh, I, I think we're in the beginning of some really very hard times and uh, only in a year or two will there be uh, the, the beginning of the return of that particular wave. And that will start, that will go into a peak, uh, not until 2031. So um, th th that's what, it, so I, you know, I don't look upon this particular virus as particularly dangerous uh, by itself. But I, I do look upon the consequences and the reactions to the virus as devastating. And mostly so, especially in, in, in the Western uh, powers, I think, because 
uh, the, you know, China, Russia, and India, and so forth, they are doing pretty well, or, or they're not very hard uh, affected by, by this. Um, but anyway, I, I just want to make the point that it's not th that I think this virus by itself is, is so, um, uh, I mean, yes, it, it, it's tragic when it hits and kills maybe some, some people, but, but it's not, uh, you know, it, it's like, uh, I think the U.S. is now approaching 100,000 deaths, and, and uh, normally in a year it's 3 million people, I think, that dies for all kinds of reasons. So it's not a, uh, yeah, you know, we can judge that, but, but what, is, what is happening now uh, with the close to 40 million people uh, registering as, as uh, uh, unemployed and, and whatever comes next. Um, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, these are tough times, I think. These will be very tough times. And so I'm not at all surprised. What I hear from uh, um, uh, people is that you know that they they might continue for maybe one or two years with this uh, um, lockdown, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and um, yeah, so it's not s surprising if you look upon then if if I said that the the bottom page point, the most difficult point would be in September of, of 2021. And only then will that particular wave start to move upwards for another 10 years. Um, then, then it's easy to see that these are difficult times. And uh, that's at, le at least what I believe. Um, so I don't believe it's sort of just a matter of, okay, let's get out of the, get, let's get rid of the virus and then we'll be fine. Uh, that, that's not the situation. Um, uh, and um, Isn't it just like the, the mentality of that sixth and seventh yes. wave is yeah. attempting to maintain their control through their oppressive structures and that as you, uh, like as you're saying, if it's bottoming down in September 2021, that that's kind of like that, that it's good to know that yeah. it is going, let's say, to get worse so you can prepare, but also know that it's going to get better after that. Because yeah. a lot of times when we see things going bad, we think it's always going to be that way. Yeah. And so what the Mayan calendar is doing is giving us a bit of a roadmap showing, you know, there, there's this really big storm coming and to... Yeah to batten down, but to have the hope and understanding that in the longer term, these other waves are going to prevail in terms of bringing a much higher level frequency to the planet and that we'll be accessing these higher levels of consciousness without actually, you know, fearing that we won't be able to because these sixth and seventh waves are so powerful. Yeah. That's what I said. So I, I, would, I would ask you then in terms of the um how best to prepare okay what, well, what would you say to people well uh you know the, the, the there are like two levels of this one is how what i'm talking about here with the waves and the quantum states and so forth that's really sort of underlying uh, uh, field an underlying field that our physical material reality is based upon and shaped by in very fundamental ways. And uh, um, so uh, I really have very little to add to whatever wisdom people would have when it comes to how to handle the physical reality. Uh, we, we know the facts, we all know the facts when it comes to the, the unemployment and, and uh, things like that. Uh, so what I the only thing that I can add is then on the level of consciousness. And what that means is on, on the level of how to develop resonance with the ninth wave. Um, because that's, that's on, the, on this quantum field level. Um, and uh, it will not automatically solve the kind of problems that uh, we have already on the physical level, but it may uh, prevent it or should prevent it from happening again, so to speak, mm. because uh, based on that consciousness change, 
we will, uh, our mindsets will change to such a way that we will be, be uh, avoiding the, the actual underlying factors that have, have created this um, crisis in the first place, which is really this mindset or this state of consciousness of dominance of nature and uh, um, uh, dominance, uh, generally speaking, of other people and so forth uh, that come out of resonance with the lower waves. So that's, you know, in terms of what I can uh, offer here is really then what I talked about earlier, uh, uh, a, a roadmap maybe, but at, at least an understanding of, of how the universe evolves. But then also this, what, what I talked about, this event that we'll be having on the 6th of June, which is about actually people learning how to uh, develop resonance with the ninth wave and to experience that and uh, go from there and change their own reality a little bit piece by piece, wave by uh, period by period, it, by following in the ninth wave of, of love and, uh, and compassion and unity above all. And uh, so that's, that's how I look upon it. Uh, uh, the, 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 um, I, I can't, you know, I could make recommendations for people to sort of prepare for uh, continued hard times, but you know that's pretty self-evident. For um, I, I would say, um, right. and right. I don't have anything to add to what anybody could figure out themselves. So. I got you. So, I mean, well, first, I'd like to to thank you and and thank you for doing your work, this light work, and to uh, bring to our species this information because it, it's so significant and so relevant and I, and I know that as a you know independent originator that is sort of going against the the norm of the sixth and seventh waves that you you have to deal with that type of rejection or dismissal in many ways that can't comprehend what this is and yeah. you're actually pointing within your model to show where they're at and of course they don't want to admit that that's where they would be and so I, I imagine that the uh, uh, you you have had to put up with a lot of um, resistance. Yeah, there is. Yeah, to, to what you've gone through, and to honor you as, a, in my opinion, a hero that has you know been a pioneer of of bringing knowledge to the world. And so you know, I, you. I don't know, I don't know how many people honor you in that way, but <laughs> well, there are a few. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Um, I, I don't know if, if people really understand, you know, what it takes for what you've done and the amount of research and the amount of intelligence and the amount of wisdom um, to do so. So, um, I mean, if anything, I, I, I want to highlight that here. And that's why I wanted to interview you because I, I'm personally, I have my own work that I'm bringing to the world, but it, but I, I realize that along the path there are so many originators that I've studied and so many people that have given their knowledge to me, and it's the basis, foundation of anything that anyone does. Right? Is is the work of the masters beforehand, and um, so I I, yeah. I I would strongly suggest it for anyone who's watching right now to get. His book, The uh, Nine Ways of Creation, and his latest book, The Quantum Science of Psychedelics. And we will put the coronavirus in Mayan calendar uh, document in the description. And on June 6th, there's the event accessing the ninth wave. Now, is this going to be online or is online? This... It's a free event online. Uh, and uh, it's filling up, not surprisingly, I would say. But yeah. It's okay. A free, so, it's a free event online, where people awesome. but people have to register in advance. Okay, um, and we'll have something linked to, in in the bottom for people to do that. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to to add uh, before we go um, to say to people regarding your work or anything? Uh, no, I think we we touched upon 
you know, the, the, just the basic structure. And uh, uh, that, that's never enough to, uh, to actually grasp what it's about, I, I would also like to say. Uh, um, uh, it's, uh, um, you, you have to see the evidence if you are to become convinced that there is a reality to this. Um, that's all I can say. I mean, I know, I sh maybe I'll link it to, to this map. I know you have another brilliant map of the ups and downs through history, and then showing yeah. the events in history that show the peaks and the valleys of what we've been through. Uh, through all of these these dips, and I, I would suggest to anyone watching to to really look at that because it's it's again a brilliant analysis of what we've been through. And I'm just wondering, do, do you teach courses? Are you um, uh, teaching online courses to people that you, you would like to promote in some way, or if um, you haven't, I might suggest it. Yeah, well, I'm I'm restructuring my work right now, and uh, the the. It's been a it's been a valley also in my own work in my in the terms of presentations outwards um, because I've been writing a book then and that that always have to uh, I'll have to go inwards in order to to do that and now there is a, uh, but but the the web page kalaman dot com is uh, increasingly uh, filled with new material and, and so forth. And uh, I, I'm 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 in the process of restructuring my work, um, and um, but yet I wouldn't say uh, uh, that that there is anything I'm offering as a course, but I, but I do th think that there will be various kinds of follow up to this event that we'll be having on June sixth. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the thank time. You. To, to thank talk you. Thank you, I will put this up and send it out. And um, I would like to, if anyone's listened this long, thank you very much. I hope you realize the significance of what, of what has been uh, shared here and the significance of Carl as a, a, a hero on our planet. And um, just like to say goodbye and thank you very much, Carl. Thank you.